focusing in on pure materials, so materials that do have a chance of returning to nature, but redesigning them at point of manufacture. So the three things that we do to change those materials fundamentally are, um, firstly, understanding how you destroy the hard crystalline part of the plastic structure. That's really important because if you don't do that, you create microplastic and that's why other attempts have failed. You then, to everyday people like me and you, create a wax or a grease. That's what it feels like in the kind of the, the early stage. You have to make that grease or wax attractive to nature. So the second thing we do is we add a prebiotic aspect. So that what is a carbon or a wax, microbes, fungi and bacteria see that as attractive and they attack it and assimilate it and that's how you get full biodegradation. Okay, so I get it now. The penny's <laughs> dropped. Um, you are addressing a problem where you know that the plastic will eventually end up in nature and you're saying, okay, we know it's going to end up being fugitive. Let's address that problem. Exactly. Before we find out how plastic can become a harmless food source, we need to know how it's made. It starts with crude oil, which contains long-chain hydrocarbon molecules. When distilled in a refinery, the oil is separated into fractions, which are a mixture of hydrocarbon chains. One of these fractions, naphtha, is the crucial compound used in plastics. Its long chains are diluted with steam and briefly heated in a hot furnace to crack the chains into smaller molecules. A catalyst is added that links the molecules together to form polymers called resins. These are shaped into pre-production pellets known as nurdles and transported to manufacturers. The nurdles are then heated and moulded into different types of plastic products. It's during this process the commercially sensitive polymateria additive is introduced. In the presence of light, air and moisture, it breaks the hard crystalline structure into a wax-like substance of short-chain molecules containing carbon atoms double-bonded to an oxygen atom. These are called carbonyl functions, and microbes latch onto these double bonds, converting the wax into food, carbon dioxide and water, leaving no microplastics behind. They're calling the process biotransformation.